I think it's really fulfilled a lot, you know, even more of the promise as when it first came out. I mean, you know, as, as someone who not all that long ago had young kids and when the iPad came out, it was like, whoa, plane trips are going to be different because now we've got movies wherever you go. Um, and now you have books wherever you go. You have uh, productivity. People and some companies even are choosing iPads over laptops because they're lighter and smaller and still very powerful and easy to use. There are just so many ways to use a tablet that um, that's really well put together. We've certainly seen other tablets that haven't done as well. But the iPad has always been well put together, and it's done a lot of things both on the entertainment and the business side, I think, really well. Yeah. And I think it's underestimated how important the iPad is for design. Hey, Scott, how are you? I am well, Michael. How are you? It kind of an interesting week. Nothing, no, no explosive news. Nobody sent to jail, but kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, we watched the Dow... Uh, Today, Friday, jumped 400 points. This is one of those things about the stock market people just makes people crazy, which is the Dow went up 400 points because of a weak job report. Apparently, everybody, all, all the analysts thought, hey, slowing down of jobs, slowing down the economy, uh, that means the Fed will finally do that next rate cut. What do you think? I mean, it's yeah, interesting. I mean, it's, it's, payroll was 175,000 jobs below the 240,000 jobs expected. Unemployment rate uh, edged up to 3.9 from 3.8. This is normally bad news. You know, it's sort of normally bad news. We still gained 175,000 jobs, continuing a streak that's been really hot for job growth that's been, by any metric, unusually long. And by the way, unemployment below 4%? Come on, anyone would want to see that. I think what we're starting to see is enough of a pullback. And that's why investors got excited, enough of a pullback to where we may see an interest rate cut. Obviously, that's going to play big in Silicon Valley, where everyone is dealing with these extremely high mortgage rates. So they want to see a rate cut. Um, but it's almost like what they said about the Goldilocks economy, where we're still growing. The unemployment rate is still low, but we're not growing so quickly that inflation is a sure thing. And they hope that a slowing economy will curb inflation. And that's really what we notice when we're at the grocery store. Uh, so we'll see if this moves the Fed. But to see slow growth, I think, is really what uh, most economists and certainly Wall Street wants to see. Now we're starting to see, looking, drilling down into the indices and the metrics of Oz, we're beginning to see an interesting phenomena that we've been kind of predicting, which is most of these new jobs occurred in blue collar or low paying jobs. And uh, here in Silicon Valley, you're starting to hear a lot of people complaining that they, you know, they came back from COVID and they got new jobs, but those jobs aren't paying as well as they did before. That white collar jobs are really not in demand as much as they were. Right. I think if you look at the overall economy, healthcare is just gigantic. And that's really where most of the job growth not only was in this latest report, but has been for quite some time. And that tells you about the demographics of our country and why healthcare is so extremely important to our country. Uh, you look at tech, and tech is kind of a sliver. It's really big. It drives the Silicon Valley. It drives the coasts to a large extent. But remember when we had all those tech layoffs, and we were wondering why the overall job numbers didn't change all that much, and yeah. you realize that tech is not the whole ball game. Um, that would be more like you know healthcare and restaurants and entertainment and that sort of thing. IT makes up a pretty small sliver of the overall economy, but a big chunk of where the money is. Yeah, you, you know, uh, I was bad-mouthing the results, uh, but in fact, you know, the good news is that wage growth is still outpacing inflation. And, uh, you know, that's, that's always good news. Okay, we had some more earnings this week. Uh, Apple. Uh, 
boy, Apple killed it on Friday. They, they were up 7% uh, the stock price. That's a pretty impressive number given the denominator. Yeah, and pretty impressive given that Apple's sales weren't all that hot. Their numbers, especially when it came to iPhones, were not all that impressive. But what did they give investors? A gigantic stock buyback, biggest one in history. Yeah, biggest and, buyback uh, in history. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Well, I think Apple recognizes, even with a gosh, a two point seven, two point eight trillion dollar valuation, that they think ah, the stock has room to grow. That's what you do when you're confident. And investors love that stuff. You know, Apple also pays a dividend. We talked about, you know, Google doing that and stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's an impressive uh, way to please investors. But I don't know that it's pleasing those who are, are waiting for the next new, new thing yet. Yeah, I should mention that the uh, repurchase was $110 billion of stock. That's... That's probably petty cash at Apple right now. I mean, given the amount of money they have on hand, uh, they should. They also exceeded their slightly their third quarter uh, analyst expectations. So they've done good, given a company that's dealing with a lot of turmoil in China and moving out and everything else. I mean, the world, as you said, the world still awaits the next big thing, but. Uh, for now, these are pretty good numbers to, to work with. Yeah, and I think I think after the next, you know, by the next time we talk, they will have had a rollout expected to be iPod focused, excuse me, iPad focused. Uh, so I'll have information on that. But also, uh, you know, we expect more AI news from Apple. I think they are finally getting on the bandwagon, realizing that's what Wall Street wants to see from a big successful tech company with a lot of money in the bank is using some of that to focus on this hot technology and this is the company remember with all that hardware and they i think you know wall street really wants to see how I, ai is going to play on all those consumer devices and really that means it's going to get into the hands of just about everybody that wants it you know you mentioned the ipad and, and, and new products coming from apple it sort of seemed to have been the forgotten product product for the last few years, but it's kind of a stealth product. I see more and more iPads than I did just a few years ago. And, you know, no one talks about iPads. It's just become assimilated into people's daily lives as a, as a quick device where you don't have to have your laptop open. Right. I think it's really fulfilled a lot, you know, even more of the promise as when it first came out. I mean, you know, as, as someone who not all that long ago had young kids and when the iPad came out, it was like, whoa, plane trips are going to be different because now we've got movies wherever you go. Um, and now you have books wherever you go. You have uh, productivity. People and some companies even are choosing iPads over laptops because they're lighter and smaller and still very powerful and easy to use. There are just so many ways to use a tablet that... Um, that's really well put together. We've certainly seen other tablets that haven't done as well, but the iPad has always been well put together and it's done a lot of things, both on the entertainment and the business side, I think really well. Yeah. And I think it's underestimated how important the iPad is for design. I see yes. a lot of art on, uh, on the web and, you know, individuals in meetings where you're brainstorming out a design idea. I mean, Apple's strength has always been in design going way back. And um, I see people just whip out their iPad and draw something, you know, and, uh, you know, it's impressive. No, you're right. And it, it really actually stands out in, in a world that really doesn't uh, have many standouts. I mean, laptops are now all really thin, impressively so. Uh, and so it's not just Apple that does that. You know, for my money, smartphones really all kind of look the same. Um, and, and, you know, they all, it's almost like you have to look close to find out if someone has an Android or an Apple or, or whatever. Um, and, and good for them. They all look good and sleek and smooth and whatever. Uh, but the tablet world is pretty much the iPad and everything else. And, everything and else. you're right. The design, the, the, the weight, I don't know what you can do with it. It, it really is Apple's game. And um, the more, and this is where I think AI may come in, the more Apple can figure out what people can do with their iPads, I think the more of them they'll sell because it's something, it's a category that they really lead in, I think, by a lot. Well, my next book, my book on uh, professional writing, 
I turned to my son and eldest son. And I said, uh, give me a cover design. And in 20 minutes on the iPad, I mean, he sells a lot of art uh, on the web uh, with the iPad work. He just drew me a complete design. I sent it off to London and they said, God, we love it. That's our new, that's your new cover. Just like that. I mean, compared to the old world of going to an agency and all of that. Uh, so anyway, okay, Amazon. If Apple did good this week, man, Amazon, they tripled their profits. A company that big, 3x profits, that's very impressive. Um, and they're, they're still rising on it on after hours trading, I believe. Advertising revenue grew 24%, and that outpaced their retail and their cloud. And their web services had better revenues and earnings per share. I mean, how does a company that big move that fast? I mean, there wasn't right. any it's revolutionary new introduction in the last quarter. Right. It's a company that's not only big and successful, but it's been around for a long time. And, you know, they do what they do and they've done it for a long time. And yet they're still managing to grow by leaps and bounds, which is incredible. And I, I you know, Amazon is one of those quiet companies that you know has all this technology in the background, AWS with all the servers and, and all that stuff. I'm sure AI is in there somewhere, um, oh, somehow right. figuring out what we should buy next and making the whole process smoother. Um, but whatever it does, it does really, really well. And it has proven over and over again that this is how we do retail. And I think this is how we're going to do retail for quite some time in the future. Yeah, it's hard to look into the future and not see Amazon there. I, I don't see anything coming over the horizon that's going to create a new paradigm, you know, for retail. Right. Uh, everybody that's competing with Amazon is trying to figure out, so even Walmart's trying to figure out a corner to get around this monolith of, of this of Amazon. So nothing's really going to change as far as the eye can see, as far as I can tell. But boy, to go have operating income up 200%, uh, far out racing revenue growth. It's just amazing. Uh, and AWS, web services counted for 62% of their total operating profit. So basically, all that stuff you see on Amazon that they're selling you, that's less important than their web service operation. <laughs> it, it's like you see a giant iceberg and you realize suddenly that underneath it is an ice, the, the underside of the iceberg twice as big. This is an amazing business model. Yeah, I mean, they also stream a lot. Um, they're starting to win major awards for their, their original content. It's, uh, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos wasn't messing around when he was talking about the everything store. It really is everything these days everything. in society. It's amazing. Okay, uh, just a minor matter. could be big, but the uh, Google antitrust trial brought by the feds uh, went into its final arguments today. So we may see... Uh, uh, a jury decision next week. Is it a jury trial or is it a judge trial? I think it's a judge trial. Um, okay. I'd have to check, but it's uh, it's interesting because this is one of those things where we as a country are starting to look at these tech companies a bit like the Europeans have looked at our tech companies. Yeah. And they're not just bringing them on Capitol Hill to scold them. They're bringing them into court to change them right and uh you know i don't know because we haven't had a whole lot of success with that or our legal system with you know the likes of microsoft and stuff but the the current the current climate feels a little bit different and so maybe this will actually uh you know change things a little bit in terms of how big and, and frankly monopolists monopolistic these guys are the uh is interesting the uh i guess the uh uh defense attorney for uh Google said that if they had gone into that deal with Apple as as originally planned, it would have been suicide for Google. I don't quite know what that means, but uh, it could a could one deal destroy, you know, one of the largest companies in the world? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, just think about some of the payments it makes to companies like Apple. I, I mean, the, the money that changes hands is amazing. 
um, at that scale, and yet does that protect them from competition? And that's what we need to see. You know, we talk a lot about net neutrality and how the size of a company shouldn't determine the speed. And that's true, because if it does, then the smaller companies don't have a chance to get in. Some of these companies and the scale that they operate on and the money they have to throw around really does, if you believe the FTC, it really does keep smaller companies from competing. And that is the definition of monopoly. So I wonder if, if this might change um, you know, this is how the whole world gets this information, but uh, maybe it shouldn't be. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, and it's interesting. The uh, the, administ the administration um, seems to be wanting to reverse net neutrality again. And I think we'll, let's talk about that next time. That, that, you know, I still don't completely understand the implications of net neutrality, but... Uh, I, I think it's going to represent a sizable turn. So we'll spend a little time on that next time. Finally, everybody's waiting around. Every investor, every small investor out there is waiting around because Berkshire Hathaway, you know, Warren Buffett's firm, has been doing a lot of uh, uh, what they're saying, confidential wagers on the financial industry uh, ever since the end of the third quarter last year. And they haven't identified the stocks they're investing in, but apparently they're going to do it real soon. And there's a lot of guys in dens at four o'clock in the morning looking at their computers that are waiting to find out where, where Warren Buffett's going next. And everybody's going to go and follow. So we may see a major turn in the stock market, at least in the financial services companies sometime next week. We'll see. I mean, look, if every investment is, in a sense, a bet, right? Uh, Warren Buffett's biggest bet is Apple, and that has paid off really, really, really well. Really, so really, really I well. get it. Right. I, I get why people want to know what's next, but uh, it's paid off for Warren Buffett, and, and things that have paid off for him have paid off because he's in for the long term. So the idea of refreshing your browser to find out what move is being made this minute is kind of right the opposite of what warren buffett has done so oh, let's sorry, learn from that the personality of day traders but you may want to get into his portfolio and then if you have the personality to do it the patience stick around for a while see what happens right right uh because that's how and i don't mean to say that there's one way to invest and certainly don't give out advice but buffett's success has come from patience and consistency and uh, and learning. Remember, he didn't invest in tech for a long time because he admit he didn't understand it. Then he learned a lot about Apple, made it its biggest holding, and has made a lot of money. And the hard part is keep emotions out of it, which he seems to be able to do in spades. It's that Midwestern small town personality. Exactly. exactly. Anyway, that's it for now, folks. You can find us on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. You can see Scott on Facebook and X. And, of course, almost every weeknight on NBC Bay Area, including tonight, uh, and me on the BBC radio show Business Matters. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.